Hey, this is XOXO Modular, and it's been a while, but we've got a few new modules coming out. There'll be an announcement probably in the next month. And in this video, I'm gonna do something totally different, which is show you how to build the A to V Project 16N rework. Uh, it's a kit that leaves you with either a Eurorack module or a standalone device that has 16 sliders, 16 CV outputs, MIDI output, and I squared C. Uh, the reason why I'm showing you this is also because uh, we have a module coming out that is kind of a cousin of MIDI XO that also includes I squared C. So at the end of the video, I'll show you how that works. All you need for this project is a pair of wire strippers, some diagonal cutters, tweezers, and you need some soldering skills. So I won't show you that in this video. You'll have to already know how to solder. You also need a multimeter. Any multimeter will do as long as it has that continuity setting, which all multimeters have. I'm going to, before I get started, use some isopropyl alcohol and wipe down the circuit board before, uh, before I start soldering. So I'm just getting any place where I'm going to solder. The next thing I'll do is grab bag number one. There, everything's broken out into different bags, so it's pretty great. Um, in this case, I'm just going to grab the two dip switches out of bag number one and get rid of the rest of the stuff for now. So uh, the first thing to do is get these on there. These are the only SMD components, but they're actually really easy to solder. Um, if you face the numbers down to the where it says 10 volts, you'll be better off, I think. And the thing to do is just get it into position, grab a little bit of solder on the soldering iron and just get one of the legs to stick. And once you've done that, you can kind of tweak it and get it into kind of a better position and then just go ahead and solder all of the legs on. Once you've done that to both of those dip switches, the next thing to do is to uh, solder in some of the through hole components, these two switches on the bottom. Uh, doesn't matter which one goes where, but we're going to solder those on next. The thing to do here is just uh, place it on the side of the board where the silk screen is, then flip it over and solder on the back. Once that one's done, you can do the other switch on the other side. And then we've got a few more through component, through hole components to place. This one is the I squared C header. So again, I'm soldering on the back. I'll just solder one pin and then look at it and make sure the pin header is straight and then solder the rest. There is no three pin header. You actually have to snip this off of the 40 pin header that's included. And there it is once it's all soldered in place. The next component to put in place is this voltage regulator. There's only one way to put it in, so go ahead and do that. And then on the back side of the board, we will solder just a single pin just to uh, be able to flip the board over and make sure the voltage regulator is flush with the board and isn't at a weird angle. And then I'll go ahead and just solder the remaining three pins. This is a good time to mention that this Eurorack power header also needs to get soldered in place. Um, I didn't do mine right now, but this is a good time to do that as well. So now we're going to flip the board over and pay attention to uh, the teensy. So this is um, in the lower left corner there. We just want to take that 40 pin header or whatever is remaining of the 40 pins and line it up, use the diagonal cutters to just snip off what we need from that and do that for each of the two rows. Once you get the board flipped over, you can solder just a single pin from each of those headers and then we'll um, take a look at the other side of the board and make sure those pins are, are flush and, and vertical. You can see mine are a little wonky here. They're not really vertical. The easiest way to get those to be where they need to be is to grab the teensy out of the kit and place it on top of the pins. So I'll dig back into the kit and grab the teensy LC and place that on top of the pins. Once you've got that on there, you can go back and solder the pins on the back. Now, if you're uh, not experienced at soldering and you're worried about overheating anything on the teensy, you could solder in a, a kind of a crisscross pattern and, and skip some pins instead of doing them one after the other like I am. That's up to you. You could also just do a couple pins and then take the teensy off and then put it back on. Same goes for soldering the teensy pins on the top of the board. Uh, you can do them all in a row like I am, or you can do it in kind of a crisscross pattern. 
So the next thing is to get some jacks onto the board. The f This is kind of important to do this in the order that I'm showing here. So you'll just take a single mono jack and put it in the upper left corner, a single mono jack in the upper right corner, and also one of the stereo jacks in the other corner. I didn't show it here, but I'll show it in a moment. So uh, you could do all three at once, but the idea is to just, again, solder one pin from each jack and then flip the board over and make sure they're totally flush with the board before you continue. Here I've gone back and just, you know, I'm just showing that the uh, green stereo jack goes in that other corner and I'll do the same thing, just solder one pin. Things are a little out of order here, so um, you can see now that there's no green jack in the corner, but just we'll you pretend it's there. And we'll grab the standoffs and put them in these three standoff holes. So there's a screw uh, for each standoff. You can just pop that through the bottom of the board, and then on the top of the board where the silk screen is, you'll screw on one of these standoffs. And you'll do that for each of those three holes. We're only gonna put these on once. We won't take them off, so now is the time to tighten it with the wrench. Uh, so now we've got all of the three jacks and we've got the standoffs. We can start taking all of the individual jacks and placing them without soldering them. So we're just putting them in place and the same with that extra stereo jack on the bottom. And then we're going to go ahead and grab the, uh, the panel and place it on, on top of everything. You can put uh, nuts on just those three in the corners and that'll keep the panel on for, um, for the next phase. So now that everything's, the, the panel's on there in place, we know that all of these jacks are in the right spot, so we can go through and just solder all of the pins on the top row of jacks, those mono jacks, and then also the two stereo jacks in the corner. So now that we've got everything soldered on, the next step is to actually take the panel back off again. So remove those three nuts on the jacks, remove the three screws for the standoffs, and put the panel aside. Now we're gonna focus on the sliders. That's kind of the, the last big soldering job for us. So go ahead and take those out of the kit. And um, if you look at them, they have uh, four pins on the top and two on the bottom. So you you know there's no way to put them on wrong. Uh, but what you'll notice is as soon as you start trying to put them on, uh, there probably are some pins that are bent a little bit. So you'll just kind of tweak them. And hopefully, ideally, they will just snap in place. They do that sometimes and sometimes they don't. But uh, you want to get them on there pretty well. And you can see I'm using the tweezers here to kind of tweak the, the legs as I place them on. Um, but we're going to get all 16 in place and then we're going to go ahead and move the levers so that they're up, down, up, down, alternating. And that just makes it easier when you flip the board over to, um, to have it stand up nicely. And this is another place where it's really critical that you follow these instructions. You just solder one pin on each of the sliders. And then, uh, what we're going to do is go back and, uh, flip the board over just like with the jacks and make sure that they're flush. So you can see on mine um, that some of them are obviously not flush. Uh, some of them you can't really tell that they're not totally flush with the board. These ones in the middle are, there's an obvious gap there. And so we'll, we'll resolve that on all of them uh, just by going through each one that looks like it's not flush, heating up that pin that we soldered on and just using our other hand to kind of um, push the, the, the uh, fader into place. So you can see that one and the next one just kind of really snap down. And that's what we're looking to do. I would do that on all of the bottom pins and also all the top pins. Once you've got all of them in and totally flush, then you can go back and solder all of the pins. The last kind of soldering thing we have to do is the LED. So take the um, the long leg, which is the positive one, and place it according to what the screen print says, and then just put the uh, the panel over over everything again. The reason why we're doing this is to make sure that we get the LED nice and flush. So I'll actually, you know, not take any shortcuts. I'll put the uh, three screws on here for those three corner jacks before I continue. And I'll just take that LED and push it up until it, you know, pokes through that hole in the panel. Then I'll take a piece of tape and make it flush with the panel. Then I could just solder the pins on the back of the LED and snip off what's left. And that's it. When we remove the tape, you can see that we've got a nice flush LED.
classy. Now uh, we're going to use that multimeter, and this is the same thing you should do anytime you're building any Euro rack, anything with a power connector. Is first make sure that it's uh, that the meter is working by touching those together. You should hear a sound, and then what we're doing here is just looking at the way the IDC connector works. These three pairs of uh, pins in the middle are ground. The pair on the top is for 12 volts, and the pair on the bottom is minus 12 volts. Use the meter just to make sure that there's no connection between ground and any of those plus pins or ground and any of those minus pins. Once you're sure that there's no ground connection or a connection between the plus and minus, then um, you're ready to go on to the next step. Go ahead and change all of the dip switches to uh, five volts on both of the switches. And make sure USB is selected as the power mode. Grab the USB cable that was included and plug it into the TNC. Before we plug the other end into the computer, let's just assemble this thing for real. That means just putting on all of the uh, nuts um, for each of the jacks, also the standoff screws. Um, you could wait to do this to make sure that everything's okay, but I'm pretty confident that everything has worked out. So let's just assemble everything here. And that means uh, putting these fader caps on. Those can go on the wrong way, so just make sure you've got it centered before you uh, push it down. Now I'm going to plug it into the computer and go to this URL on uh, in Chrome, even if that's not your favorite browser. And what you should see is this configuration tool. Uh, if you see nothing there, something's gone wrong. Uh, make sure that light on is on in your Teensy, first of all. And if it is, um, moving the faders should show some activity uh, in that configuration tool. And you can do that with all the faders, just make sure they're all there and uh, responding. So you can see here that it shows you what channel and CC number each fader will output on either USB or uh, the TRS jacks. I'm going to go to the edit config in the upper right there, and this is where you can actually change those uh, CC numbers and channel numbers. You can do that independently for USB and the TRS jacks, which is pretty cool. And the last thing to test is the analog outputs. So to do that, we can grab that multimeter again, just get any regular patch cable and plug it into one of those CV outputs. Then use the multimeter on the DC voltage setting and just take the black probe and put it on the ring part of the uh, patch cable. And then the red one goes on the tip. So right now we're getting zero volts and that's because the fader is all the way down. So if I turn it all the way up, I should see five volts and I do. If you see 10 volts there, that means you have a problem uh, with the soldering of the uh, dip switches. Now I'm going to go back into the configuration tool and choose that last tab uh, and then just double check under I squared C that we're in leader mode. And that is to is kind of a lead in to the other thing I wanted to show you now that we've got the kit built, which is a module that we're coming out with in this uh, collection of uh, uh, four modules that are we're uh, releasing soon. Um, and it's this one right here. It's called IXO, and it's kind of a cousin of MIDI XO. Its only feature is to be a breakout for other modules like uh, Disting EX or Teletype or um, ER301. And these are uh, all modules that use either MIDI or I squared C or a combination. And so that's why this is kind of a great companion for those. So we've got the same features that we have in MIDI XO, which is that we can uh, plug in a stereo jack here and have that go directly to the disting in this case. Uh, in disting, I can go to the miscellaneous menu and choose show MIDI history. And I should see here that as I change faders, I can see exactly what's coming over through, the, through that um, MIDI breakout. Um, if it wasn't working, then we can just change one of these switches here uh, or that top switch and you can see now it's not working and that just changes the polarity, which is kind of the main interesting feature of MIDI XO and IXO is that we can kind of adjust for the, the competing standards for TRS MIDI. Also, we can use this jack as the output from the module, which is great. That could go to any other device, especially if you turn on MIDI through. Uh, and the addition here over uh, MIDI XO is that we have this I squared C connector. Now, the way I squared C works is that it really prefers that everything is turned off before you connect it. So I'm going to turn off my uh, rack here, and I also turned off the fader bank. I plugged it, plugged in the uh, one end of the stereo cable and the other end into the fader bank. 
when I turn on disting, let it boot up, then I'll turn on the fader bank, and that's kind of a preferred order. Once, once they're both up and uh, connected, I can again go to that miscellaneous menu and choose show I squared C history. And now what you should see as you move the faders is actually the I squared C data coming over. So as you can imagine, this has so many cool possibilities in terms of uh, using this one breakout to control two modules, one on either side, you know, maybe one does MIDI and the one on the other side is dealing with I squared C. Uh, you can also send MIDIs and receive MIDI from this one module, this one disting EX in this case, and simultaneously send it I squared C. Again, for the modules that this can pair with, uh, Disting EX, uh, ER301, Teletype, and some others, um, Accord Melisma, uh, the, you know, the ability to be able to deal with MIDI in and out plus I squared C for some or all of those modules and pairing that with the uh, 16N fader bank is just kind of a whole other world of possibilities. So look forward to uh, IXO and I'll make an announcement about that and the three other modules that are coming out. And if you've got yourself that A to V Project 16N rework kit, hopefully this video has helped you out. Thanks and take care.